Morongo Basin to Joshua Tree and why you like our artist community a lot. Okay, well, I love the artists here. I've been drawn to this community for many years. Um, my husband and I, we Scott, bought a house out in Flamingo Heights, so that uh, it's about 10, 10 miles up from Yucca Valley before Landers, and we found this place that's just beautiful. It has like five acres. It's right across from the Bureau of Land Management land, and we call it BLM land. And it just feels it's so peaceful and magical. And um, I just, I love like all the artists. We go to all the art openings and music events. And, and I just think it's a very, very great area. I just love it. I also see that you still work in the Los Angeles area. And how's that going along? <laughs> okay. Well, I, well, what's going great is I'm a clown and puppeteer in Los Angeles. So I've done that since I was 25, and now I'm 66, believe it or not. And, and so the clowning is great. I've been a substitute teacher for LA Unified for the past 14 years. And so I go to elementary schools, uh, pre-K through sixth grade. And, um, and then I, I do an underground arts program, so I do magic and puppets. And then and I, I work a lot in areas like East LA, Highland Park, and I, you know, I bring art to the kids too. So I have the kids make up their own puppet shows, and so it works really well. That's really nice, Alice. I, I can see that that you keep yourself very occupied, and then, and uh, I see that you're also trying to do a little bit of music too. Because um, I went to your birthday party one time, and, and there was some music there. How do you like music, and what's your experience with that? I love music. I mean, it started out with uh, I write poetry. It's been amazing ever since I was a child. And then sometimes the poems come in songs. So I started uh, doing my songs a little bit. My uh, best friend, her name is Julie Feiner, and I was singing um, at a party at my house. And then she has encouraged me, saying, "Why don't you start singing some of these songs? I really like them. They're kind of, you know, funny, and I, even when I think it's serious." Then just last night, I had put some videos on YouTube and then Facebook, some just little experimental things and then my friend uh, Leah Solo Taylor, who's an artist um, in Morongo, uh, said that that actually my songs a little bit reminded her of Sherry Elf. She said it's very Sherry Elf-ish and I said really and I said that to me is a huge compliment because I love Sherry Elf so much. She's such a sweetheart and so I thought so it's just something I'm doing it just comes from my heart and I'm just singing. Um, my husband, Lee Scott, is a, you know, he's a professional musician and he's a editor and composer. And I played at him one time at, at your party. Yes, you did play. And you were great, Leslie. Everybody, you were the hit at the party. Oh, thank like, you. Everybody loved it. And I always enjoy everything that you do. I love your artwork. I love your music. And you are beautiful. Oh, thank you, Alice. And also, um, for the record, I'm also making a film called Living in a Better World, which is going to be debuting during the art tours this year. And um, it's featuring members of my Small Wonder Experience band, as well as members of the art community, and yours, tru and yours truly, and yourself. And um, in the film, I have a 12-year-old actress portraying me as a child in the dram dramatization scenes. I portray a relative of mine, my grandmother, in the film, and uh, I um, have to admit that, you know, it was a hard role for myself to play, to have to play the part of a relative that I didn't, you know, I figured, you know, I would bring that character best to life because I don't think anybody else in the community could portray that, that character other than myself because I actually saw her while she was living and all that. And, uh, and the actress, uh, Destiny Briggs, who played me as a kid, actually got my role and was pretty accurate, you know. She ad-libbed because I don't believe in writing scripts all the time. And have you noticed that back in the day, you know, back 25 years ago, kids like that were bullied extremely bad, and today you notice that there's been a big change. What have you observed about it? Well, I what I've observed, because I'm in LA Unified, wonderful district, um, <laughs> there still is bullying. That does go on, and the bullies are dealt with pretty strongly. Um, there, you know, there's new laws or whatever, even within LA Unified that they're implementing, because a lot of times they would just, you know, expel them for a certain amount of time, and now there's something that they don't want to expel them, and, 
and but I mean I think there always will be bullies unfortunately and there are people who are not accepting of people who are different I mean that's something that still you know is true yeah but do you are you aware that the kids are are being accepted more by their peers you see the improvement of acceptance. Of I do because I, I even look at, um, for example, my my own niece, um, who is bisexual, and that there's much more acceptance now. It seems like for teenage in, that I see in teenagers um, and children. I mean, it, that it's a whole different world than when I was young. Because I think when I was young, it was like it was very different. There would be no acceptance. Yeah. It's like the 1990s. The early, I like to think of the 1990s with all the good music and all the good TV shows and all the good fashions that I remember that, that just bring back wonderful memories. But unfortunately, all other memories are not so positive for me. My peers around me did not accept me. My teachers and my counselors were not encouraging of me. They were just basically telling me to man up or shape up or ship out. They had a rather militant attitude. It, I mean, school became so bad to where I had to leave before I graduated because of the fact that it was extremely, extremely a toxic environment. It was the point where even my life got threatened and the police were involved. So, you know, that's, the, well, that's how bad it was. But, of course, you know, if anybody were to ask, are you gay, are you a tranny, are you whatever, I had to deny it. I had to completely deny it 25 years ago up till the very last day I attended that school, that high school. I had to completely deny it. I later came out to those who were my true friends, I'd say like maybe five years after high school ended, uh, on the phone or through letters I've written, I came out long before Facebook or emails were available. And um, all but one has accepted it pretty good. One person who I've been kind of feuding with since 1989, unfortunately he still hates me after 2012. And he basically said some really, really hurt, hurtful things to me as of, you know, last year. You know, he still holds a grudge, and it's, that's very sad. So I have to just let that go and acknowledge, hey, I tried. Closing, um, what would you like to say about the world today and kids? Well, I guess I'd like to say there's so much goodness in the world and that we should focus on that. Children really are are our future. I know I just read on Facebook Ted Quinn had posted uh, Sage, his son, had said, give peace another chance. And I really love that. And so, and I think out of the mouth of babes. So I would like to believe in the goodness in everyone and that we should just focus on that and that everything's going to be all right. Well, thank you, Alice. I enjoy having you on the show. Thank you, too. And welcome back to Kitten Time with Leslie Mariah Andrews. This would normally be the personal music selection segment. But lately, you know, I've been focusing a little bit more on other people besides myself, I like to focus more on my friends and my really good colleagues and everybody around me here in Joshua Tree and, of course, my family. And, of course, I like to feature a little bit more local music sometimes. And I like to play some of my personal music, but it depends on my mood, really. Now, this time being the first show that we've had in a while here on Kitten Time, I like to fe feature a little bit more local music and a little bit more of, you know, the songs that I think I've been meaning to play for the last four weeks that we didn't get to do a show. So anyway, I'd like to start off with an, a familiar favorite that I often play with Small Winter Experience and has become more of a Small Winter Experience.